Okay, so this is the last mini lecture for Tuesday of week six, um, and we're going to finish up, <clears throat> excuse me, talking about blood pressure. So basically for this, we're going to talk a little bit more about a couple other pressures, um, how to calculate something called pulse pressure and mean arterial pressure, and then we're going to go through a few figures. Okay, so here we go. So we've got pulse pressure, and pulse pressure just gives us an idea of how strong the wave of pressure is in, in the blood vessels. And it's really easy to calculate. It's systolic minus diastolic. Okay, if your pulse pressure is really high, that can be a problem. If it's really low, it can be a problem. Okay, so low pulse pressure means that your heart's not um, pumping really hard, and so blood's not gonna be moving as efficiently as it should. Um, so this could mean that you've got some heart failure going on. High pulse pressure, on the other hand, can mean that you've got um, a different kind of issue like hypertension or stiff arteries like atherosclerosis, that sort of thing. Now, if we use the, um, the typical stereotypical, um, 120 over 80 pulse pressure is about 40. And that's generally true. Um, although I would argue that 120 over 80 is not typical blood pressure. And, and I'll probably discuss that in class. Then we've got mean arterial pressure. Now, mean arterial pressure is just what it says, okay? What's the average pressure in the arteries, okay? This has nothing to do with the heart. I mean, the heart does contribute to systolic blood pressure, but we're worried about the pressure in the arteries. And so it's just a weighted average. And so you have to know or remember, like we talked about with Wiggers, that we're in systole for a third of the time and diastole for two thirds of the time. And so as a result, we just take one third systolic plus two thirds diastolic. So if we use those typical values of 120 over 80, um, we end up with a <clears throat> mean arterial pressure of about 93. Now, more likely than not, you'll end up with um, a calculation problem on the exam for both pulse pressure and mean arterial pressure. Um, I try and make the math really easy. And so as you can see, these are one third and two thirds. So I'll use numbers like 150 over 90. Okay. And so if let's just say we use 150 over 90, well, one third of 150 is 50 and two thirds of 90 is 60, right? And so it's going to be 110. All right. And I do that so we don't get into decimals and that sort of thing. So if you end up with a number that's got a decimal or ends in a three or something, you've probably done something wrong. All right. So I want you to look at this figure for just a second and just see how blood pressure fluctuates as we go from the aorta all the way back to the vena cava. Now, as you can see here, when we're really in the arteries and something called the arterioles, which we'll talk a little bit about um, in future lectures, we actually have a, a pretty big range. Okay, so blood coming out of the aorta is about 120. It's a little, you know, here it's probably 115 over 75, but we have a big, we have big fluctuations. Okay, but by the time we get into the arterioles, those fluctuations are relatively small. And then really, once we get into the capillaries and the venules and the veins and the vena cava, pressure's pretty consistent. Okay, so the pressure waves kind of died out and it's just constantly moving. It's really important or really interesting to note that blood pressure in the vena cava is nearly zero. Okay, and what this means is, is the heart is pumping just hard enough to get blood back to the heart. Okay, so blood leaving the left ventricle is coming out with just enough force so that everything else can get back to the heart just enough, right? It's just an example of our heart being efficient. Okay, it's not pumping too hard. It's not pumping too light. It's the Goldilocks pumping just right. Um, I believe the last thing that we want to look at is just see how changes in blood pressure, um, how those are occurring. So we've got four different figures here that are showing different locations in the circulatory system. So we've got diameter, we've got total cross-sectional area, we've got average pressure, and then we've got velocity of blood flow. Okay, so remember from the last lecture that the diameter or radius has a big effect on resistance. And so at the beginning, we have very big vessels, and then we get smaller and smaller until we get to the capillaries, which are about the diameter or the, uh, of one red blood cell, and in some cases even a little bit smaller, such that um, blood cells actually have to fold up a little bit like a taco uh, to get into get through the capillary. And then once they leave the capillaries, the vessel diameter again gets bigger. 
So remember as we're kind of, I'm gonna divide this in half here, as we're on the left side of the graph, resistance is gonna go up, sorry, this is terrible, and then on the right side of the graph, resistance is gonna go down as we go this way. All right, then the next thing we've got is this cross-sectional area, and so basically this just gives an idea of um, how much of the circulatory system, um, like where blood's kind of at. All right, and so there's very little cross-sectional area in these big arteries, but we have a lot of cross-sectional area in the arterioles and capillaries. And that's important because if we've got lots of cross-sectional area, we can have lots of gas exchange, that sort of thing. But again, as we get to the capillaries here, cross-sectional area starts to go down. Pressure we just talked about, so we go, we've got a gradient. So we have high pressure here in the aorta and low pressure in the vena cava. All right, and this is where that delta P comes from, from the flow equals pressure over resistance. Okay, where the gradient is from the aorta to the vena cava. And so generally, like I said on the last slide, pressure is close to zero in the vena cava. So it's just, well, what's the average of the blood, average pressure of blood in the, in the arteries? And then, you know, so if it's 100, 100 minus zero is 100. All right, and then the last thing is the velocity. Notice that as blood comes out of the aorta, it's very fast, but we start to slow down a little bit when we get into the capillaries, and this has to do with the fact that we have increased um, resistance, which isn't shown here, but that just due to the fact that we have decreased radius, that should give you an idea. And then as the resistance decreases, because the vessel size is getting bigger, blood is moving a little bit faster. This is important though that we have low velocity as we go through the capillaries because gas exchange takes a little bit of time, not a lot of time, but takes a little bit of time to occur. And so that's where we're gonna end for mean arterial pressure.